Hi, welcome to my uh, screen replacement video for Sony Violetta. I've already completed the project, and yes, I will be showing you how to fix it. So I'm just showing you the final product, showing you the screen I bought from uh, laptopscreen.com. Did work. I'm really happy with it, and I definitely will recommend to friends and family to uh, laptopscreen.com. If you ever break a screen for a laptop, your phone, or somewhere, you'll be able to find a great deal and probably find an exact replacement or what you need. Before I begin showing you how to fix this and replace the screen, I'm going to show you basically what ended up being broken on this laptop the previous owner didn't understand. This is the screen. It's not the whole lid. It's not the whole laptop. It's just a panel. The backlight still was good. The laptop itself is still good. Just she, uh, she managed to break this, and that made the laptop basically unusable. They were the only vendor I was able to find online that sold what I wanted for a replacement screen. Now, the hindrance of a matte screen is it will dim things a little bit, but on the advantage of a matte screen is you can actually go outside, view the content you want to do with it, and you will be able to see it without major reflections. There. Tools used for this repair would be two jeweler size Phillips of different sizes as this Sony Via laptop does not use all the same size Phillips screws. You will need to use more than one size Phillips screwdriver to remove them all. Also to re remove the rubber grommets on the laptop lid here, I used a flat blade jeweler screwdriver. That worked the best for me for prying it apart. It's not a requirement, but I highly recommend you have a plastic pry tool. The reason you want to have a plastic pry bar to take apart the bezel here and the bottom of the laptop is you will avoid cutting and cracking the plastic around the edges. This will allow you to reassemble it without doing any damage and will make the repair go much smoother. You notice I have these screws here in different compartments. I made a mistake during the repair of the Sony Via laptop, but just using something like this, a generic tube, a generic container, whatever. The problem is the Sony Via laptop had miscellaneous screw sizes and it made the reassembly of the laptop a little more difficult. Had I done something like this, putting the screws in different compartments, would have made the repair much more easier to put back together. And I can't recommend enough if when you attempt this repair of your own Sony Via laptop, Try to use something like this, or at least have different containers laying around. Hi, welcome to my screen replacement video for a Sony Via laptop. Before I begin, I'm going to show you to, to demonstrate that this really is a broken screen on this laptop. I'm going to turn it on, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. This previous owner managed to break the screen and decided it was scrap. I came to the conclusion that the screen could be replaced and you sh it's actually still a usable laptop. I don't know, the camera's picking up. You can actually physically see cracks along this outer glass here. As you can see, the backlight is working, but the screen itself is not really displaying much except one little corner here. So with this information, we at least know the laptop is functional. Now I'm going to turn it off. And before we begin, we're going to have to remove all sources of power from this laptop. We are going to flip it over. We're going to remove the battery. With the AC adapter removed and the battery removed, this laptop should not be powered. To remove the lid, or remove the DVD drive right here, you're going to need to remove this screw right here, and this DVD ROM will then remove. Then you will have a bunch of Phillips screws. You remove all of them, even in the battery tray here, there are three Phillips screws. They need to be removed. 
and then the bottom lid will come off. Alright, now all screws are removed are loose. You can physically remove this case here that exposes the system memory. It's not necessary for this. So I'm gonna leave that right in place. Alright. You're gonna hear a series of pops as you try to remove the bottom with the screws loose. Very important, make sure all the screws are loose when you try to loosen that. So okay, with that removed, you're close now to removing the monitor so we can get working on that. This monitor cable here, you will need to loosen and remove. All right, once the wires are loose, the only thing holding on the laptop monitor then are these physical screws here. There'll be a total of four Phillips screws here, 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 and here, over here, on the hinges. Remove that, and once the wires are loose, it should come. You should be able to remove the screen. There are also one ground wire over here. You want to be careful. Make sure to remove that. two ground wires, one on the motherboard as well. Okay, now we need to remove, okay there's a rubber grommet here, here, here. What you're going to do is remove those rubber grommets and they're going to expose screws when you get to them. Okay, with all four grommets removed and the screws removed, now we're going to use our non-metallic uh, pry bar here to try to remove the, this hinge. We're going to need to remove four screws here, 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 and here. There's a wire right by the webcam. It's got to be removed. Once that is removed, also ground wire. So, all right, I've done the hard part. I've reassembled the wires, reattached everything. Main thing we're left to do is just add the screws to the hinges. Once they're attached, you should be all assembled or ready to put the bottom case back on. An assembly of the bottom of the case is exactly what it was taking it apart. 